Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala ashraf al anbiya wal mursaleen Nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een amma ba'd Welcome dear viewers to another halqa, another episode in this series of seeking knowledge um, Today we're going to talk about the ma'had, the institute of learning the Arabic language for those that do not speak the Arabic language, those that are non-native Arabic speakers and so from the programs that the Islamic University of Medina offers is two years in this institute for those that are not able to speak Arabic at all or for those that have studied a little bit of Arabic and they need to complete their study, studies in Arabic in order to be uh, fully ready for their studies in the Kulia. And that is because, as you most likely know, the degree, the Kulia studies, which is four years, is only in Arabic. They speak in fluent Arabic, there's no translations, there's no English and there's uh, 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 all the books, all the exams, all the essays, all the research, everything is written in the Arabic language. So you must learn the Arabic language first. Some people ask, Tayyib, if I don't know Arabic, how do I uh, apply for the Jami'ah and where do I learn Arabic? Don't worry, the Jami'ah already covers that and they offer this two years for those that don't know any Arabic. The, um, the only thing you need, the only requirement that you would need um, to study in the Ma'had is it's not a Rasmi requirement, I'm just saying um, uh, from yeah, the experience and from the Waqi' that you need to be able to read the Arabic alphabet. So if there's someone that's new Muslim or someone that's never studied um, the basics of Arabic, how to read Arabic letters, how to connect Arabic letters into a word and how to read them, then you must do so before you come to the university because the university does not offer that level they do not offer that basic level of learning qaida nurani and baghdadi and the likes of these things where you learn the arabic letters they do not offer that in the in the institute they do offer it in masjid and nabawi so if you were to come and um, you studied maybe the first couple of weeks in masjid al hara masjid al nabawi you would study that but you would not be understanding anything in class you would be going getting behind in class. So I would advise anyone that's new Muslim or that hasn't that is not able to read the Arabic word if he sees it, is not able to recognize it, it's not able to read the alif and the ba and the ta, doesn't know what it looks like, then a person must learn that before they come to the jama. But like once they come to the jama, um how many years is it? Um some information about the ma'had, um then as following. The Ma'had, the Arabic Institute, consists of two years, meaning um, four semesters, four academic semesters and so we have uh, two semesters in a year and so one year is two semesters and the other year is two semesters and so you start off with Medina book one the curriculum in the Islamic University is the Medina well-known the famous uh, Medina books that have been written by Dr. V. Abdurrahim but they are not the only books that you study so in Mustawa al-Awwal, the first uh, Mustawa, you will be studying um, uh, the Medina book one and they call it uh, Tadribat. They call this book Tadribat and this subject Tadribat. So you study Medina book one, that's one of the subjects. Alongside it, you study Ta'bir, expressions, a book on expressions. And alongside that, you study Qira'a, how to uh, read. So there's a book on reading. And lastly, Al-Imla'a. Al-imla, and that is uh, how to write. So there's a book; it will tell you how to write the letters. Uh, the requirement is that you're able to recognize them. But as for writing, um, then if you have the basics, you you'll be able to study that in this subject and to improve your handwriting. If your handwriting is not that uh, clear. طيب. Then the second semester, you also study to the debate again, and I'll mention it now so I don't have to repeat. You study to the debate for every semester. So we have. Um, tadribat from Mustawa Thani, Thalith and Rabia. And alongside that Tadribat, that's the main subject, um, you have other subjects that accompany them. So the intent behind um, studying these other books alongside the Tadribat is to complete your studies of the Arabic um, language and your Arabic vocabulary and for you to get used to those Islamic terms and those Al-Fadh uh, Shari'a that you're going to see uh, more of when you go into the kulia is giving you a little preparation for that and so in the first semester you study tadribat and alongside it three books then you have 
مستوى الثاني اشتريت تدريبات and you have alongside it a couple more books and then in مستوى الثالث there is a little jump from second semester to the third semester there's a little jump there's a, a extra subjects introduced so in مستوى الثاني you have حديث but it's very basic then in مستوى الثالث you have حديث and it's a bit more detailed and you have فقه which is a, a lot more detailed um, but the intent is not that you study فقه and um, that you understand everything at this stage the intent is that you get used to these alfaz and these these uh, words that are being used and you, you begin studying the seerah of the Prophet Sallallahu in the third semester and some other um, uh, books are, 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 are with alongside that main book of Tadribat and the same for the fourth semester and they introduce um, Balagha um, uh, 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 which is a type of uh, from the categories of the Arabic language so you already have grammar from the beginning then you introduce Balagha uh, at the end you also have in that last semester fourth semester you have Sarf a lot more Sarf in detail um, and some other um, books alongside it like uh, the biography of the Khulafa al-Rashidin um, and another uh, nice little uh, side books that you study on the side so of course as we said the intention of those side books is to help you in your Arabic language to nurture you uh, in using the Arabic language in, in this, this specific field of Islamic sciences and getting used to those words in those fields it's also good to mention that all of these books that you'll be studying in the Ma'had in these two years all take place in the Arabic language there is no English there is no other foreign language being spoken by the teachers in most cases they don't even know English or any other language apart from Arabic and so the studies in the Ma'had all takes place in Arabic you're learning Arabic in Arabic and that's uh, one of the keys to the success of uh, these types of institutions that you learn the language in its original uh, uh, language that the language you're actually trying to learn itself you won't be getting translations you won't be getting um, uh, any support of that type and so you might ask, how am I going to learn? Well, it's, it's mujarrab, it's been tried and tested and it works. It's just been tried and tested and it works. Of course, um, everyone's experience of the ma'had, it varies from person to person, from individual to individual. And it all depends on many different factors. How ready that person was before they came, um, the type of teacher that they got, obviously, all teachers are not at the same level. Um, teachers are all different in their methods and in their uh, um, you know, their strengths and their weaknesses some are better than others um, and you notice that through your studies so you just ask Allah Azza wa Jal to give you a, a, a good teacher that is uh, mutqin that is uh, you know, well versed and very knowledgeable in their, in their bab you find, we do find that uh, Egyptian teachers when it comes to teaching the Arabic language are blessed in that regard they are from the best of the teachers when it comes to teaching and giving that information or trying to yani, uh, uh, um, make someone else learn the Arabic language from scratch. They are the best and it's something well known and, and, and everyone could uh, bear witness uh, to that. Um, I myself, alhamdulillah, had uh, the, 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 the blessing to study under an Egyptian teacher in my first semester and he was absolutely amazing and uh, so um, if you get an Egyptian teacher you'll find most times they are very very well versed and they know how to teach they've just got the it's like second nature to them so um, yeah you find them they are better than, than the other teachers that, that, that teach there um, but nevertheless there's fa'idah in it um, truth be told uh, sometimes it's not enough to suffice with the ma'had. Sometimes it is not enough to suffice with the ma'had. It is possible that you get a teacher that maybe he knows the stuff. Obviously, he knows Arabic already, and he knows all the information. But they might not be as good in, um, yani getting that information across from themselves towards the students. They don't have. Some of them don't have those teaching skills to do that. And so, if you were to, to rely on the ma'had alone then you would find yourself deficient somewhat and so for that reason you have to put in effort as well 
outside. I'm not. It's not. It's not like you have to study Arabic all over again by yourself outside. No, you take what you can take from the Mahad. You have different teachers. Some will be good. Some will be good. You take what you can, and whatever you didn't get properly, then you take it outside. So uh, when I was in the third semester, I found somewhat of some deficiency within myself with regards to the Arabic language and somewhat lost because if your foundations are shaky, then um, whatever you built up upon it is going to be shaky and it's going to have gaps. And so Alhamdulillah, on the outside, we began studying with our teacher and my friend, close friend of mine from America, Zala Khair, Samir, Allah is Khair. Um, he began private lessons for us in the basics of the Arabic language. So we studied in one of the brothers' rooms, uh, Friday night and uh, Saturday morning, I believe. And we would study Mubtada and Khabar, what's the definition for each one, how do you recognize it? Definition, ism marfu' fi bidayatul jumla, what is ism, what is marfu', how do you recognize them, the likes. Um, we learned mudaf mudaf ilay. We learned na'at wa man'ut. We learned al um, mamnu' min al-sarf. We learned all of those basic things that we would have studied in Medina Book One and in Book Two. We studied it properly, so um, I really benefited from that. He would give us homework. He um, zahla khair. I memorized the awzan and all of the scales of the sarf. Uh, walking from that class when that class finished going to the matam, to the restaurant, Akawi, and it was like a 10-15 minute walk. And on that walk, he would teach me um, two or three scales a day or a week. And so I'd memorize it on the walk and on the way back, I'd um, voice record it. And, and when I get home, I'd write it down and I'd memorize it, memorize it like that. Until today, I have it memorized from those walks that we used to have. So you have to put in the effort outside, uh, either with a senior student um, like I did with myself, I went to, alhamdulillah, had the blessing of studying with a senior student and he was very proficient in the Arabic language he studied in Egypt. Or um, that you uh, f um, put the effort in um, maybe having online classes, it's worth, it's worth it as well. Um, there are some teachers that teach online privately, one-to-one, -one. you can benefit from that also. There are many other avenues that you can take. But Al Muhim, the most important thing is that you do not suffice with the Ma'had. You don't say, oh, they didn't teach me and uh, oh, well, they never taught me properly. No, that's not an excuse. You came to learn Arabic language. Um, and so just because you are tested with having a bad teacher, that doesn't mean you don't put the extra effort outside in trying to make up for that deficiency and to be able to grasp the Arabic language properly, uh, inshallah. Tayyib, some people they ask, um, I know a little bit of Arabic, so what level should I go to? Um, firstly, the university now, they do take an exam of you uh, when you uh, want to enter the Ma'had, so they can determine your level, how much you know. And so if you only know a few words and a few sentences, then it's better that you start from the beginning, Medina Book 1. But if you studied beforehand Medina Book 1 and the sentences and you learnt Mubtad and Khabar and Mudaf, Mudaf Ilayya and Na'at and you can recognise it and you know it where it is in the sentence and the likes of these things then you should not go into Mustawa 1 you should go to start at least from Mustawa 2 if you learn even more than that Inna wa akhawatiha Inna and his sisters and Kana wa akhawatiha and Laysa and some of these other things and the numbers and the rules of them then you shouldn't either go to Mustawa Thani um, both Mustawa Awal and Thani, uh, there's a bit of easiness with it. Um, but Mustawa Thalith, if you feel like you want to challenge yourself a little bit, you know some Arabic, you know these things that I've just mentioned, then you should go to the third semester. It's a bit more challenging, it's a bit of a jump and a leap from second semester to third semester. So third semester, a lot of students that have studied some Arabic before do uh, uh, يعني, try to go, they do uh, go and start from the third semester and they find comfort within it they don't find it too easy they don't find it uh, too hard if they studied a little bit before of course if you haven't studied anything then i recommend you to begin from mustawa or well, first semester because you'll find it too difficult i myself uh didn't know in much arabic maybe i, I learned maybe the first couple of chapters of medina book one just before i left some words here and there but generally speaking i didn't speak arabic nor did i know any arabic so i started from medina book one and i found that um yeah, and very beneficial and 
and um, on my level at that time. So I wouldn't advise anyone to skip that level and their own level because what that will cause is it will um, leave you gaps in your studies and it will make your uh, grasping of the Arabic language that much harder, that much harder. Uh, what about going to the Ma'had and combining it with um, Masjid al Nabawi, the Halaqat, Quran and Mutun and attending the scholars? What should I do with regards to combining that when learning the Arabic language? Then I advise you, then I advise you sincerely that you benefit from the Halaqat al Quran as much as possible. If you haven't finished the Quran, then benefit from the Halaqat al Quran whilst you're studying Arabic. And I advise you to give great importance and much of your time to those two things, Quran and Arabic in this beginning stage. I wouldn't advise you to go and attend two, three, four, five, six different sittings of the scholars. I wouldn't advise you at this stage to do so. Many of the scholars, when we came, they would advise us that we, uh, what should we do? Should we go to the scholars directly, even though we don't understand them? Or should we not go and focus on Arabic? So. We can learn Arabic and he said do not come to the to the, to the to rules of the scholars if you don't understand anything focus on the Arabic language give all your energy to that so that you can come to the lessons of the scholars quickly and that once you get there you can understand them completely and properly and so it is from the mistakes of some people that um, they go to the rules of the scholars not one not two to all of them or as much as they can and they've just come one of the mistakes that I fell into when I first came and because you're coming from England and you're coming from the West and you don't have scholars in your own lands. And so it's like a phenomen phenomenon to you that there's scholars here and it's not just one, it's like there's like tens and tens of different scholars all teaching at the same time or um, between different salawat. And so um, I, I did make that mistake of going to as many scholars as I could. I went to Sheikh Abdul Masan Abad, I went to Sheikh Saleh Sahimi, I went to all the lessons. And that was a mistake on my behalf that I learned on later on. And so I would advise you don't fall into that mistake. But what I would advise you with is not to completely abandon the circles of the scholars. I would advise you to go to one lesson of the scholars. So there are two scholars that I would highly, highly, highly advise all the students in the beginning levels of the Ma'had and the learning of the Arabic language to attend. And they are, those two Mashaykh, they are, number one, Sheikh Ali Nasir Al-Faqihi. Sheikh Ali Nasir Al-Faqihi is known to teach the books of Sheikh Salih Al-Fawzan. And the books of Sheikh Salih Al-Fawzan have a sloop of, yani is easy to understand. And many of his books already have harakat, they have um, the Tamma, Fatha and Kasra written on it. And so when you attend the lesson of the Sheikh, the book is easy and understandable. And the Sheikh doesn't do too much. It's very appropriate for a new beginner. I used to attend uh, when um, in my first year or at the beginning of my, uh, in my second semester, the Sheikh began Arba'in al Nawawi. He began and he did Qawaid Arba and then he did Arba'in al Nawawiyah uh, with the explanation of Sheikh Salih Fawzan. And we find that very, very appropriate at our level at that time. And so I would advise you to go to that Sheikh. And you will find many Westerners do begin with Sheikh Al Nasir. You'll find many other Westerners going to that lesson. So if in your first level you don't understand anything, then I would advise you to attend just so you can improve your listening skills. And write down vocabulary. I used to attend some lessons of the Sheikh uh, before that, before that book. I would attend and I would just write down um, vocabulary. I would write this word, go back, check the dictionary, vocabulary, go check, go check, go check, go check, or highlight the book. I would have the book and I would highlight words and go check them. I remember I used to do that awfully a lot at the beginning stages. So it helps you, it improves your listening skills to go to these lessons. The second Sheikh I would advise you to go to is Sheikh Salih Al Hudayfi. Sheikh Salih Al Hudayfi. Sheikh Salih Al Hudayfi is likewise uh, from the well known Mashaykh in Medina, and he teaches every day without a fail. And he is known likewise to teach in a very easy manner that's very understandable and good and appropriate for the beginner student of knowledge. So he teaches Kitab al he teaches Usul al and every year he begins those books again. 
بلوغ المرأة the likes and so I would advise you to attend أصول ثلاثة class and and the likes of these classes that are رغائق he does a ترغيب الترهيب للمنذري the likes of these books that he does I would advise you to attend these two scholars شيخ الناصر فقيه شيخ صالح الحديثي I'm not saying if you're a new student that don't go to the مشايخ and يعني uh, sit down uh, once or twice and the likes or if you have extra time no I'm not saying that I'm saying don't put all your effort in going to all of the scholars at your beginning stage because you need to focus that energy on in, in learning the Arabic language so once you learn the Arabic language and you do it properly then you'll find that later you'll be able to benefit from the scholars properly but if you rush this stage of learning the Arabic language do not benefit from this time in learning Arabic language then you will find that two years down the line when you go to the Kaliya the Arabic will be weak when you when you're listening to the scholars in your own class and your teachers in your class in Kaliya and when you go to the scholars in the Haram and, and outside the, the, the university you will find weakness in your understanding you'll find uh, that you've got gaps and so this is something that is mulaha something that's been seen and mushahed that I would uh, that I strongly advise you with Another advice that I would give to those that are just starting or beginning or already in the Ma'had is that I would advise them to try to mix with people that speak Arabic fluently as much as possible and if you are from the West or from the East where there are none uh, yani native Arabic speakers then I would advise you to not mix and socialize with your people as much as you would do especially in these beginning stages so that you are able to practice your Arabic language and so firstly <clears throat> if you're a westerner or easterner stay away from your own people at the beginning not completely not saying you can can't go out with them once no I'm saying your day-to-day -day, try to mix with the adults as much as possible those people that speak Arabic fluently those people that are higher up in their studies in their masters or PhD those that are about to graduate the likes those that are known to be hard-working people this will improve your Arabic language and it will uh, grow your level it will, it will yeah, and it make your level um, better become better Taib, so I remember when I first began um, I had a, 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 a English brother brother from the UK and he was um, so I remember when I first came to the university um, my roommate was from England and he was likewise Somali and so when we were in the room I can speak to him in English and I can speak to him in Somali this was not good for me why because I'm here to learn Arabic language if every time I come back from class I'm speaking to him in English very good brother Zala Khair one of the um, one of the most generous and kind and, 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 and nicest brothers but we're trying to learn Arabic both of us and we're both new both came from the UK so if I was to stay in that room it would be harder for me to learn the Arabic language and I remember one day um, our teacher in the Ma'had first semester for the Tibet, he told us he advised us that if we Ha if we have a roommate that speaks um, same language as English that to change the roommate go to another room and remember we were together when he was telling us his advice and said if you if you two are together change rooms don't be together and we we had to um, change rooms so I, I was under idea even though my brother wasn't but um, I changed rooms uh, for that benefit alone and so I became roommates with a um, brother from Maghrib from he was Moroccan he was Moroccan he was from Belgium but he was from Morocco so he already knew Arabic obviously he did not speak Belgium he speaks a little bit English but he was less it was better than before it was a better scenario than before then later on um, I tried to mix with our Arabs as much as possible and I found that the Yemeni the Yemeni the people from Yemen were very very open and so I became um, friends with Yemeni brothers and I would speak to them a lot and my Arabic was so broken sometimes we'd be doing sign languages remember at that time the war in Yemen broke out and the brother would just tell me things that are happening in Yemen the events and the things that are happening and I remember he, would, he literally had to do sign languages 
it's explain some things yani, with his fingers and stuff and that's how i would learn new words as well and so um it helped me immensely just being around those yemeni brothers a lot and 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 hearing them and their conversations and they don't understand this and what where was that so they would tell you so there's a lot of benefit in mixing with arab and i found that the yemeni community are very open very uh, easy to mix with and to get along with and the likes so that's my advice if you have a roommate that is not fluent in arabic then or is westerner or from your own country to change him to try to get someone that does speak arabic um as much as possible and if you're outside try to mix when you're those times where you want to relax or um you want to go with some people to the masjid to try to go with people that only speak arabic it doesn't have to be an arab it could be someone else from kazakhstan he doesn't speak english and he's he's hard working arabic Khalas, be friend with be friends with that person someone else he could be from china but he's mujtahid if he's hard working and he's learning arabic properly then be friends with that person the point is don't be with someone that speaks your own language so if you're from the west you speak english don't don't go don't be with someone that speaks um english try to be with someone that speaks um a, a foreign language to you so he's only communicates you with you in arabic language there's much that could be said but generally speaking i think i've covered um the majority of the things that i wanted to cover in this uh short little uh, reminder um the arabic language lastly i will stop, finish with this the arabic language is easy to learn Allah chose the arabic language to be the last language where the last of the messages of Allah is to be uh, sent down with Allah revealed to the last of the messengers and the anbiya in the arabic language and Allah Azza wa Jal said that he made the Quran easy and so um, the Arabic language uh, by necessity as well is easy it only requires from you some little effort consistency and some seriousness and if you do that for a while you'll find yourself grasping the Arabic language in a short space of a year a year and a half sometimes two years and so keep at it do not give up and put a lot of hard work in it try to do all of those things that we mentioned in this video uh, try to go to one or two scholars only so you can practice your listening skills refer people that uh, speak arabic um, stay away from uh, any wasting your time and uh, put, uh, pushing your energy in uh, anything other than learning the arabic language and the quran in your first early stages <coughs> that's all i have to say for this halqa uh, until the liqa al-thani والآخر سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت استغفرك وأتوب إليه